Hello and welcome to How to Win the Lottery Season 2, Episode 2, Prep by Curtis Sittenfeld. I'm Joey Lewandowski. I am Bobby Fisher. And here we are talking about the first book of 12 we've covered so far you had not read before. This is New, new Ground, Breaking New Territory. Show enough. And we are now on even playing, even footing, even whatever. You and I have both read this book once. Yep. Neither of us starkly not the target demographic for this book yeah you were previously uh aware of this book because my sister had it read it growing up my sister younger than me i had just seen it around like i think the cover which we're not for reasons unrelated to the pod we're not going to have judge a book by its cover (laughs) but i think the the, i think the cover is fairly iconic i think it's a very striking image that makes it sound like we had a falling out with matt no matt just uh fancy baseball reasons that we're not going to get into um but I think the I think the cover is very striking and memorable. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily reflective of the book. I think I didn't know what it was. I think I think you mentioned that they're like book straps or something like that. To I hold, think so. Hold, like, yeah, I didn't. I thought it was a belt. So I didn't even I didn't even know what it was. There's also the other. So Curtis Settenfield has since read written a couple other books, and she had written uh, Rodham, and the cover of Rodham is like a girl, like a young Hillary. Right. Yeah. Face. Yeah. It's, yeah. And anyway. so someone had retroactively done another cover of this book where it's a young, I guess, Lee, like a fictional Lee. And then on the cover, it's just like secret history meets blah, 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 meets blah, blah, blah. And we're like, oh, it's none of those things. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Let me There's... see if I can find that exact. Silly, 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 silly stuff. Anyway, Bob, what is prep? Of... Oh, here you go. The O.C., yeah, it's not like the OC at all. And and I, I would know. I'm an expert in the OC. The OC meets Donna Tartt's The Secret History with dashes. Did the, did the print get really small? It is just really small. The <laughs> flashes of somebody. Flashes of something. With flashes of Chuck Palahniuk. I don't know. Oh, right. The OC meets Donna Tartt's The Secret History with flashes of Clueless. Yeah, none of those things. Clueless. Literally none of those things. Classic film. Secret History. Great novel we'll be covering it later this semester. The OC, Bob's favorite TV show. Oh, well, I don't know They about all that. come together <laughs> to meet to make prep. Yeah, it's not like any of those things. No. But I think if you're like, hey, high school girls, uh, here's two things that you love and another book that you might love, all smashed together, yeah, read yeah, this book. Yeah. If you like Adam Brody, you might like... Suge. Suge. Bob, what is prep about? Uh, it's about a uh, middle-class girl uh, who convinces her parents to let her go to an elite East Coast prep school. Yep. Boarding school, specifically. And the book covers over eight chapters, the four years of her co- of her high school. Yeah, which is uh, one of my main beefs with it, with the book. It's, like, very rigidly structured. Yeah, and and each of those sections is focused on, like, is individual events, but if you're going to cover that amount of time, like, it, it feels like it's not covering enough. Like, it feel in some ways, it feels like this should be a 900-page book or a series of four different books. So here's this... This is not an issue that I had necessarily with this book. I had other issues with this book. I did not really like this book. Mm-hmm. Again, not the target demo. My issue with biopics in film yeah. is that when a when a biopic tries to span a person's career, yeah. it's too much. I agree. Where they're like, this is where he grew up, and this is his first yeah. single, and this is his you know Grammy-winning album, mm-hmm. and this is how he died. It's just like, the movie's two hours long. What are we doing? Yeah. But when you do a biopic like Selma, which is ostensibly a Martin Luther King biopic about one event— it works because it's a singular yeah. thing. St- structurally, whatever, fundamentally agree with you. I didn't have that issue with this. I had other issues, but like I see I, – I would agree. Like if this was four books or even like two books or something or just a much longer thing. Well, the, here's the novel that I want from this book, which is like, again, I'm, I'm wary to criticize a book based on what I want it to be rather than what the author wants sure. it to be. But – but I don't know what the author wants us to be. What 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 I want and what I think is a nice little contained novel on its own that includes almost the entire arc of the actual novel is the assassin section mm-hmm. and her arc like friendship with Conchita. Because the way that that ends with her tagging her and, and killing her in, in the assassin yeah. game on campus, like that is like a perfect emotional climax to that segment. Yeah. And if, if you airlift that portion out of the book, you have like a really, really tight small novel that uh, includes her quote unquote relationship with cross mm-hmm. includes all of the class stuff that that, mm-hmm. that, you, that you come to learn classes in like economic class yeah um that you come to to think of later in the novel all of the race stuff that you think of in the novel oh boy and also you get the 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 sense that lee is uh an asshole yeah 
I think that there's two really good parts of the book. And I think it's not coincidental that it's the two times when like things are actually happening. Mm-hmm. There's the assassin stuff. Yeah. And the very end, it's her interview with the New York Times reporter and the fallout from that. OK, I, I disagree about about that. But continue, you don't like that part. C- conti- yeah. Continue. I'll, I'll, I'll go. I'll go into why. Well, because I think the assassin thing you summed up well. But so much of this book is an unlikable narrator that is also I think it's I think she's unlikable maybe by design. I think definitely by design. Because yeah. it feels like to a certain extent we were just saying, you know, you don't want to review this based on what you want it to be. I don't know what Curtis Sittenfeld want, wants this to be, but it feels to a certain extent like she's saying, hey, young girls, don't live a life in solitude. Go out and make friends. And I don't know if that's the point of the book or not, but at, at times it feels like that. So I uh, didn't really like this book again, and I think that it's like one of – I don't normally have a tough time relating to books that aren't that don't exist within my demographic or or wheelhouse or whatever. Uh, I have a pretty like broad tastes, but the majority of this book, I was just like, I can't relate to any of these anxieties. I can't relate to any insecurities that this character has at all. I mean, and I have like you know class issues. I have class resentment in, like pretty strong inside my body, sure. and I have various anxieties but just like everything that she was just like freaking out about i was just like who gives a fuck about that it doesn't matter i think what also what amplifies that what makes it more difficult is that by the end of the novel we get the sense that like these are all issues that she self-inflicted yeah because she's not the most popular she's not ass biff (laughs) yeah she's not the most popular the prettiest girl in school whatever but she would have had friends. She would have had boyfriends. She would have, you know, done well in classes and clubs and whatever. But she was so afraid to do things. Yeah, which is summed up basically in Cross's little monologue toward her at the end of the book, right? He goes yeah. to the thing. He's like, you're weird, but you're not that weird. And if you were that weird, it wouldn't matter if you yeah. just, like, came out and talked to people about it. And so it's frustrating. Like, I almost wish that there was, like, but I think if there was even a little bit of this, it would completely undermine the rest of it, which I know why why you can't. But, like some outsider's perspective of like like a, a chapter from Martha or something like oh this is what Lee is actually like because yeah so it's frustrating because she's so reticent to do anything right and it's annoying it also makes for an undynamic character like when it, it, a yeah. character that is like there are no events happening because of this right. character and it's not we talked last season open city where like there's things not really happening but that's there's diff like a different reason for that this yeah. is just like Oh, I'm, I, I, you know, I'm not cool enough or whatever. Or like, I don't deserve a boyfriend or what. It's just like, try it. I don't know. Like, just do a thing. But the other issue that I had and it related, I think, is there's a weird kind of omniscience to the narration because mm-hmm. she's like telling the story after the fact. Yeah. And she's like, things all wound up fine. And it's like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, there's very little actual darkness to the book. No. You, you have Sinjun's suicide attempt. Right. But even that is like... Lee is tied up enough in herself that she doesn't actually seem all that concerned about Sin Jun. Part of the another part of the issue is that she is a very naive, in every sense of the word, inexperienced, sort of racist girl who just doesn't know things. And so when Sin Jun tries to kill herself and the teacher's like, she took pills and she's like, was she sick? Yeah. Like she's just so oblivious to anything. Right. That kind of person exists, but for that to be the the person we see the world through their eyes sucks. Yeah, it's it's not it's not exciting, but like I I also wonder if like my inability to access like a lot of this is just like this is what it's like to be a girl at a boarding school sure. and and like I can't access like I don't have access to those ideas of anxiety which is like you know that that might be my fault that also it also might be Sittenfeld's fault for not being able to like help me access those right it, it like uh, unless her target demographic is so specifically like just those girls I didn't have any problem identifying with uh Esther in in, in the bell jar well this, I was talking to Desiree about this uh about the book and about how I wasn't really like this is early on as a reading. I wasn't super into it. And then you, I was like, I don't think Bob, I'm like, I don't know if this is a condemnation. Like, I don't know. Like Bob might like the book independent of this, but I know that you had said to me that you couldn't relate to her issues. Yeah. I mean, it's not an endorsement. That's not going to be like a reason to like the book, but like you could still like it and not necessarily relate to it. But I'm like, it probably correlates to like, he's not super into it. 
and Desiree's like, well, you know, because you know, trying to she's framing it like as like a it's like you know high school girls or whatever, yeah. and we're not in every sense of the word. But I'm like, yeah, but that's not true of the Bell Jar. That's not true of like story of my life. That's not true of like Treasure Island. Like there's like we talked about last last episode. So many of my favorite books that you've had me read yeah. in the last year, year and a half have been from the point of view of like someone who looks and is basically Lee. Yeah, I think the difference is that those books have a, uh, I don't want to call it superficial, but they have like a narrative darkness or violence to Mm -hmm. them that makes them more uh, conditionally a book, right? Whereas this is like a very uh, realistic depiction of things. And the thing is that like, as far as teenagers are concerned, when you can, when you, when you focus on teenagers with realism, if you if you look at a realistic teenage narrative from an adult's point of view, it is dull because that shit is not scary. And I do wonder, and that's I tried to think about this, and I I want to give it the benefit of the doubt. I don't know that I can consider it like this, but I wonder like if if teen girls because like it does it does feel like from the external older not even male or female, but just like older because the boys have drama in this too, and it's just like yeah. none of this matters. You're going to be fine. Right. But I wonder if you are a 14 or 15 or 16 year old girl reading this book, if you're like, oh, my God, like it, it's it's my life. And probably. I, especially especially if you're a middle class person in a, in a boarding school with a bunch of wealthy kids. I mean, there was a pretty big wealth gap in my in my high school as well. Not like this, really. Uh, like something that was interesting about my high school was that the it was like uncool to be rich. I think. Okay. Like there was this idea that like rich people had to like play down. Like they they, they didn't like talk up their wealth okay. because it was like you could get made fun of for being like a rich kid. Really? Yeah, a little bit. That seems like the opposite of both this and every other movie ever. Yeah, just like, oh, like is the, did you movie buy that with your daddy's money? You know, that yeah. sort of thing. Like very like condescending. I do one thing I did like about this book is, and well, I guess we could talk about it, whatever, but when the New York Times reporter's like, you know, I've been there. Let me, I, I can relate to you. Uh, I, I lived with a girl my freshman year and she bought a very expensive coat and yeah. then she lost it and then she bought it again. And then she tells the same story later. That's, that's, that's uh, brilliant. That, that, that was so good. So good. Yeah. I laughed and like, and Lee just like his speech was on the phone. She's like, I, I, this fucking, yeah, this like this, woman. she means nothing to this woman. This woman yeah. didn't remember really talking to her at all. Yeah. She was just like a vehicle for her to get this stuff yeah. out of. So she's just being used by someone else. Right. right. There's always like. Everyone is trying to use other people for clout throughout the whole book. Yeah. And like when the New York Times author is using these children for clout, it shows that like that doesn't really ever change. Like everyone is just clout chasing for their entire lives. Because I think the it seems like the narrative that is propelling the New York Times article, author, writer, journalist to write this like slam piece on alt and all prep schools yeah. is that she came from – seemingly like maybe like a high school experience like yours where it's like you don't talk about the wealth like it's or i guess it's also the same thing here i don't know if it feels i will say um uh just since we're talking about the new york times stuff the reason why i i, I yeah, why think, didn't you like it i think it's hacky because it's like it takes this like 15 10 10 15 page section and it's just like in an interview format we're just going to lay out the themes of the novel yeah. and state them explicitly rather than letting us do the work for it because like until that point we know like, we should know how Lee feels about all that stuff. Which we do. Yeah, but, like, to have at the end of the novel just be like, okay, we're rounding it up now. Yeah. Here's here's everything that's going so on. So why I liked it is because it finally, and I think one thing that Curtis Sinfeld does well is that it, it puts into context how other people feel about her. Yeah. Because right. we largely don't know. That's true. And so she says the thing in, like, the interview, yes, I agree, is, like, yeah, okay, the theme... Uh, and a concluding paragraph and a five paragraph essay, like yeah, here's yeah. here's the three <laughs> things I just talked about, but then we actively have people like aware of her, uh-huh. and I think there is, I mean, I think maybe the point of that in the novel is that there's an irony that like she, and she even says it like I can't believe that I flew under the radar for like four years minus a week and I screwed up in the last week. Also, at the same time, the entire time she wants to be noticed and she's finally noticed, and I think. It's not as action-packed as Assassin, but there's actually things happening and people reacting to her as opposed to her just, like, head down, walking through a thing, not talking yeah. to people. Yeah, like, I could – I probably couldn't tell you anything that happened. In the, like, there's, like, that whole fucking section about her becoming a hair cutter. I'm just like, who cares about any of this? What it, Like, why are we spending 100 pages? Like, like, sophomore and junior year, get rid of them. 
We don't we don't need those the 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 entire middle of the book we can get rid of. I texted you and I said, "Wait, don't answer. Have you ever offered cuz so she she seems like she's a good student who also just doesn't give a shit. And like the apathy is so frustrating that like she's really struggling at math and then all of a sudden she's just like, "I can I can have a B in math. It's fine." Yeah. It's like, "What the fuck?" Right. But at one point she's just she's assigned by your English teacher, sophomore English teacher, write an essay about something you care about. Pick a social issue and just write about what you care about and why you care about it. And she writes on like the cover page, note, I don't actually care about this. <laughs> yeah. And her teacher gets furious. And then after they kind of argue or whatever, she's like, okay, how about this? You cut my hair and I'll give you a grade for the haircut. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so I texted it's, you, yeah, have you ever offered a student a grade for a haircut? A student offered to clean my house for a grade once. What did you say? That's, that feels so awkward. Yeah, I was like, uh, no, just do the work. She was like, she was like, I'll clean your house, I'll do whatever. And I was just like, no. That's so awkward. Yeah, it was pretty weird. And then she stopped coming to class, which I was like, oh, thank God. I don't want to deal. With, like, I, whatever energy that is, I don't want to deal with it. Yeah. Is sophomore year the also where, or freshman year is when she meets Cross. Yeah. That's for, yeah where, where they she, go to, like, the, the mall. She passes out from getting her ears pierced. Yeah. Let's talk about Cross, because Cross is this guy that she has, like, an unrequited crush on for most. Like, they have, like, she she likes him from afar, and then she gets up close and personal with him at this trip to the mall and he puts her arm around her on the way home. And then for like three years yeah. or two and a half years, she just has a crush on him and doesn't talk to him. And then one night he enters her room and fingers her. Yeah. And then he comes back continually and eventually they have sex and they have this relationship and sometimes right. she blows him. Well, because at the mall as a freshman, He's like, I'm not really into my girlfriend, but one thing, you know what's really cool about her? She gives blowjobs. She loves blowjobs. Yeah, it's just like, you're whack. <laughs> That's like the lamest. Like, he's supposed to be cool. Like, I guess he's supposed to be cool, but we're seeing him through Lee's eyes. Lee doesn't understand that that's like one of the stupidest, lamest things yeah. that you can do is, is just be like, oh, yeah, my girlfriend, uh, here's some private information about her that probably isn't even true. No. Like, it's so full of shit. And then at the end, at the very end, like, one of their last interactions, like... They're just like in the school, I suppose, in the dorms. He's like, you want to go in here? She's like, okay. He's like, you know, it would be really great right now if you gave me a blowjob. She's like, okay. And she just does. Yeah. And then he like. <sighs> well, you said, you you texted me to say that it was a, it was it's an unsexy so unsexy. Book. Yeah. And I, and, and I said that I liked that about it, right? Why? Because it like, because I, I don't really think that Lee is, um, especially with like blowjob stuff, right? Like I, Lee is not. It's a job. She's like very workmanlike about it. Well, she says she's businesslike about yeah, she's it. Yeah, right? like, she's like trying to just like get the thing done because like Cross exists in a place that is, um, you know, he's in in some way he's like capital for her. He's he's a way for her to boost her ego because she never felt anything about herself. She always thought she was this piece of shit. And then Cross, her being able to make Cross feel good validates her in yes. some way. Right. Um, it could have, I guess it could have been sexy when... There could have been sexier writing when, uh, like, initially, like, when he fingers her and she orgasms and stuff like that. That that feels like a space where it's, like, meant to be romantic and sexual and stuff like that. There's a very weird line that feels blurry where it feels like most of this – if you're if you're talking about, like, in film ratings, because I, I, books are different. I, I don't know how to talk about it with books. But, like, it feels like most of this book is trying to be PG-13. Yeah. And she's, like, kind of, like, alluding – like, there's a point where, like, I thought they had sex, but, like, they didn't. It's just, like – and then we blah, blah, blah. But then, like, all of a sudden, like, just, like, a character who just, like, starts cursing a lot. And I'm like, oh, like, this is, like, there's, like, language and then just, like, sexuality out of nowhere, which I guess feels real. But it feels like so much of this is, like, carefully kind of laid out to be okay for young girls to read. And then it's just, like, yeah. sort of, like, again, not sexy, but, like, sexual. Don't you feel in some ways that, like, your high school years were more NC-17 than, like, the rest of your life? Like, wasn't there more cursing and bad stuff going yeah. on when you were in high school than any other time? Yeah. Yeah, so it's I feel like if you're writing a high school narrative, it shouldn't be for kids. Weirdly enough, you know, most young sure. adult literature is, is has young adults in it, but, like, it feels, it like, high school feels, like adult content but for it, some reason does most of this feel like purell to you like it like sort of hospital like yeah i mean i think that i think lee is living that life right she's mostly unaware. so the writing's by design it's not yeah because i think lee is is naive uh, certainly through you know it's like a close third close no it's it's first person so like you, you you're entirely 
inside her head and she's she's essentially even though it's she's in the future it's all in the past tense so she's reflecting on how she felt at the time how she felt at the time was like incredibly naive didn't really know anything and cross is the only guy that she is with in the entire time that she's in high school yeah right? even though it seems like she has a crush on everyone like she has a crush on gates who's this older girl this cool older girl um, but that goes away. Well, so, th- yeah, that's another thing that was really interesting to me in the story at first, which I think that kind of blows at the end, is is this idea that there are characters that are big deal that completely disappear from the narrative. Like, I like that about Conchita. I like that she was like a huge deal freshman year. And then... But she also comes back. I know. That, that, that yes. it, it doesn't it doesn't work for me. Okay. Like, her coming back at the end, like, is, is like a remind... Again, it's like this self-conscious reminder of the themes. Reminder of the betrayals. Reminder of, of uh, the ways in which uh, the New York Times article is reflective over all four years. See, I think that that's okay. Because I think that in school, like, you know, we were just talking before we started. Like, I had a friend who was like, I was really close to. And then, like, we just... Like, no real reason. Just we didn't hang out my senior year of college. And it's just like, well, I think you kind of like just drift. Although here we get the sense like the, the, maybe there's 50 kids in her class. Like it seems like a very small tight knit community. Yeah, But what, what I'm saying is that it would then be like, if that friend that you hadn't talked to in a while came back to deliver a thematically relevant speech at the end of your time. Oh, well, so I, okay. So I didn't mind that. Like, so I guess we're talking about two different things here. Like, I don't mind that, like, Gates just goes away or whatever. No, no, I think that that's good. Okay, but you yeah. don't like that they come back. I don't like that Conchita okay. comes back to, have to, to like, have a moment at the sure. end. Conchita, who's, like, my favorite character in the whole book, probably. She's great. Daughter of an oil baron. Yeah. There is one good part. You said you can cut out the sophomore and junior stuff. I think the—I hated it, and I think it's very frustrating on many of the lo- levels, but it's something that's noteworthy is the parents' weekend where her parents drive out. Oh. That's junior year. Okay, I have stuff to say about the parents, too. But go go ahead. Talk about the parents weekend. Yeah, that's junior year. You're right. So, again, this is her, you know, firmly reestablishing or establishing or whatever her sensitivity around class. That all of her friends' parents fly out and they're all dressed really nice. They all stay yeah. at the Sheridan. They all go to this very fancy restaurant or whatever. And her parents are driving out. And, like, she has to, like, tell her mom without telling her mom to dress nice. And they're not staying at there. And they're not going to that restaurant or whatever. The entire time they're there, the dad is just, like unbearably awkward yeah. and i get that that's kind of like that's what happens with dads and daughters sometimes but like and i, I guess it it's effective because i was just like uncomfortable and i'm like this is it just it feels so forced and just ugh. yeah um i i will say i said that i couldn't relate to anything in the book the one thing in the book that i really could relate to was when the dad is uh driving them back from the ice skating party and he and the son are just sniping at her the yeah. entire time. Like, they're being mean for no reason. Yeah. Like, as though aggression were a form of bonding. And and she's just, like, sitting in the back, just like, I came on this trip to be nice. And yeah. I went inside so that he wouldn't embarrass you. So, like, why are you two being so fucking mean to me? Right. Like, I, I, I could relate to, to that because, like, I, I'm familiar with, like people bonding over picking on on uh, other people you know? sure uh so, so like that part felt really really real to me and and maybe if you extrapolate that to other moments that other people can relate to maybe that's why this novel has like lasting staying power because like if that moment that felt really real to me like if all of those other moments felt like that to other people then i can see why this is like a powerful moving novel what's weird about that ice skating moment is that after Parents Weekend, where it culminates in the dad slapping her. Yeah. And being like, we're not staying tomorrow. We're leaving now. Mm-hmm. Like, tough shit. And she's like, but mom, can't you come? Mom's like, sorry. Like, he wants to go. Like, I'm powerless in the situation. Immediately after that, Lee is like, in future Lee, is like, you know, after that, my dad and I basically became best friends. And like, he would, like, once he got a cell phone, we called every day. We talked every day. Yeah. And so it feels weird and out of place later i guess it's not because it's you know in in this world like a year later or whatever it's like it hasn't reached that point yet but like for him because we've 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 handled that conflict it was understandable but shitty and we talked it through and then she's like and this is how it resolves and then so to like backtrack on that i'm just like why are we doing this yeah it's it's always weird when you when you approach a book i mean bell jar did the same thing where in the first paragraph it's like I'm all right now, but yeah. Uh, so it's it's interesting to like undercut all the drama by 
giving away like that ultimately everything is all right but even that stuff like that felt incredibly realistic to me too because i think like a lot of people have a lot of problems with their parents when they're like in high school sure and then they ultimately end up being like really good buds with them well because it also it's not like what the way he's acting is i think i think she is able to write this adult character better than she's able to write the high school characters largely which is maybe mm. strange maybe not strange then she's like what what do you say about a 39 year old man and i'm like 30 <laughs> yeah yeah he's a year older than me and i'm like oh boy because i like the way that he's acting and the way that it, i'm just picturing is like he's in his 50s i wonder how much of a dick i would be to my teenage daughter like would i be embarrassing to her because i'm a pretty like i'm i'm uh i think that i might be because i i don't think that i would change the way that i act and and i feel like you have to change the way that you i was thinking kids. about in this moment before i was before i like over like we we teased this conversation when we hung out yesterday but like I was thinking about how Matt would act with like around Violet's friends, and like I'm sure like he could be like weird and silly now, and like his her friends would all love and she would love it. But like in eight years, when the un- when the other judge in the chambers is like you know Lee's age, <laughs> like I think he I, I don't think he would embarrass her. I think I think he'll be totally fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> unlike me, right. where I think I like I might be embarrassing, but I don't I don't know. Dads, man, what are you gonna do? I I, I will say that uh, like my own personal dad was very embarrassing because he was like a lot like this dad and that he would like talk shit to people and be like very openly yeah. insulting to people and insulting to me like he like that the you know bonding over aggression like that's like what my family was like so that's why i, I you know not my mom but my dad and my brother and stuff her family dynamics are interesting i kind of wish that there was either more or less because there's not a ton but we keep especially toward the end of the narrative i feel like we spend more time like on breaks with her family and stuff like that but i think that there's something interesting about the midwestern element like fish out of water not only class wise, but like culture wise, sort of. Yeah, right. New England is its own like f- freaky, fucked up beast. Yeah, and I think that also like her, not maybe not necessarily her parents' values, but that idea of like quote unquote like what a Midwesterner is mm-hmm. like leads to Lee being racist and shitty and mean and yeah. Let's talk about her being racist and maybe homophobic. Yeah, let's talk about. Her I think being the novel's racist, racist too. Okay, so you you don't you don't think it's it's you don't think that the novel is addressing and calling out the, these sorts of issues in 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 like institutions of white privilege. The reason I think the novel is racist is because the one black character early on is little, and there's a thief in their dorm. Yeah, and the one black girl is the thief. Okay, and I was like, why pick her? I, I guess that's that's very early on, but you have like Darden is is black and he's like yeah, but he he doesn't really become a character till like the end. Mm-hmm. But right? he has, I mean, he has like maybe like the uh, almost like a thematic line for the whole thing, where Lee's like, "How am I so naive? How did I not like think that this woman was going to take advantage of me?" And Darden's just like, "It's because you're white." Yeah. Like I didn't fall for that shit because like I have to always be on guard right. around everything. Like, she was looking for an angry black man from me, and I didn't let that white woman manipulate me. Because you have this privilege, you're not aware that people are trying to manipulate you in the world. And so you let your guard down, and we're easily taken advantage of. And I think that conversation is great, and I think he's a great character. I don't think this book earned that. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. I understand the idea of having a largely white community. Yeah. And making special note of like oh there's three black kids in our class or we had a black woman come speak or whatever Mm -hmm. but if it's commenting on race by not commenting on race by having everybody be white and privileged you need to do yeah i think you need to set it up more i don't think i don't think that's the forefront i think it's and i i think i don't know i don't know you make the 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 narrator the main character a person of color or something but like having her be it feels like the book is more about class than race I think race and class are inextricable for the most part. And that point is being made by having the narrator be white because she's like, I'm an outsider of an outsider because like people would understand if I was on scholarship, if I was a person of color, but like, there's no reason for them to, it's, it's weird that they have me on scholarship because like, it feels like I'm taking up someone's spot or something like that. Right. Yeah. That outsider of an outsider thing is, is interesting. You think it was effective? Uh, Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I do. I don't know. I don't think the novel is saying anything like really great, like over the top about about class or race. I think it's like one person's story and the way that they right. move through it. Thematically, I don't think it's doing any like huge work. 
because it's trying to tell like a a really personal story on a on a like microscopic level that addresses these bigger issues and the way that it addresses them is you know through these eyes i think is fine it's telling a personal story but i feel like we don't really know Lee. like we know Lee, but we don't really know oh Lee. i agree yeah I, I agree about that i think i think that like i don't know any of these characters no and maybe that's because lee doesn't know herself because she never allows herself to explore anything lee's kind of lee and i think the society at large is kind of homophobic because they mentioned toward the end no one had ever come out as gay at alt. Do you remember that line? Yeah, but that I that feels totally uh, normal for the time, right? Because when this does this take place? Early two thousands? No, mid two thousands? No, I think I before? think before. Yeah, nineties. Okay, is that established or is that just? I don't. I I assumed it. I don't know. It might it might, it might be established, but, but you you know it's significantly before cell phones, right? Pay phones. Okay, yeah, fair. Yeah, um, and you know that like no one had email when she was there. <laughs> Yeah, and she does use Martha's computer. Yeah, but she talks. I mean, she specifically says like, "I'm sure email existed when we were at all, but nobody had it, right?" So this is like definitely the '90s, okay. if, if not like the, the we're talking the early '90s because it, I mean, I had email and shit when I in like 1998, right? When was this book written? Uh, early 2000s, I think. Published in 2005. Yeah, so that's you know, Entertainment Weekly called this a cult classic. In a 2018 reassessment. Yeah, that that makes sense to me. I think a lot of people love this book. And the New York Times named this one of their top five works of fiction for 2005. I'd have to reevaluate 2005, but I doubt it would make my cut. Oh, there's not even a full wiki about this, is there? I it, didn't. I didn't look. You had. One I, yeah, job. I know. You gave me a job, and I didn't do it. Well, because after we, <laughs> what did you learn about the bell jar? I don't know. I don't even remember. But like, j- listener Joey was very specifically like. Look, you need to read the wiki so that if there are any facts that we, we're going to like get wrong. And then like every day since then, he's been like, did you read the wiki? And I've been like, no, I forgot. And then we get here now and it's just and it's come up. And I don't even know if there is a wiki for it because I didn't bother reading. We were watching football today. You had your phone in your hand looking something up. I'm like, you're going to read the wiki, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so on Curtis Sittenfeld's wiki, yeah, a there's, a, there's a section that says prep. Took three years to write. Published in 2005. Sittenfeld's dialogue is so convincing that one wonders if she didn't wear a wire under her hockey kilt. Yeah, I don't know about that. I mean, it's it's like, like sure, there is some stuff in here that's really real. The the stuff with um, uh, Devin, where they have the the terrifying misogynist Fisher cheese thing, Ugh. like that feels really realistic to what high school is, right? Dudes making like charts about girls and and so here's here's a thing: can she can the author can she just write dudes better than she writes girls or is are we so tainted by Lee not knowing herself and like because I imagine if you're trying to write a character who is a blank slate that never really grows to do that effectively I I have to imagine is hard yeah sure because we're talking about you know the Devin stuff is good the dad stuff is good you like the Suge stuff to think, a certain extent I think I think my like I recognize those archetypes and stuff more because they exist within my world more than a boarding school girl does. And so so like her, the problems that she has are like kind of foreign to me, but I know I've known guys like Devin. I've known dads like the dad. Yeah. But like, you know, girls like Lee, when I was in high school, I didn't, you know, I didn't have relationships with people like that. So I have no idea. Well, because girls like Lee didn't have relationships with anybody. Right. And I didn't, I mean, I, you know, I didn't have that many relationships with anybody either in high school. So I don't know. But so in terms of like the, the, the gay thing, like Sinjin, Sinjin uh, who's her freshman year roommate, yeah. and then moves out with his girl named Clara. Mm-hmm. And then when Sinjin tries to kill herself, Lee goes to the hospital and sees the two of them making out, like kind of having like, you know, grinding on each other. Yeah. yeah. And she's like, oh, my God. But then like later, she's like, I didn't even think she was gay. I thought she was just making out with a girl. It's like, wait, well, how, how's your brain Yeah, this, this is why I don't I, I, I don't read this stuff as homophobic because Lee seems to like not actually give a shit at all that she's gay. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't like doesn't matter to her. I think the racism is more clear than the homophobia. For sure. Right. For sure. But when you say when you say like they talk about how no one had how, had come out, it's like. Yeah, I don't. Nobody really ever came out in my high school either. I guess I was thinking. So in my in my mind, it, the, the, it was set. I didn't think about the context clues of like the lack of technology and stuff like that. That it, it was taking place like ten or twelve years after it actually did, and like that, yeah. I thought it was weird, wildly different from now. But like early nineties, like early to mid two thousands, like much different, much more progressive. Even though it's even then back then not great, right? But yeah, I mean, again, I I graduated in two thousand one and. 
uh, there were kids that people thought were gay, but nobody, you know, they, yeah. they, they denied it and, and were, you know, bullied for it and shit. But like nobody in my, in my class was out of the closet. What else about this book? <laughs> Should we talk about cross? Sure. Shug? Yeah. Well, how do you feel about cross? I don't know. You don't know. Well, I think he, he is a, uh, I think he's a pretty good dude. Why? Because I think the problems that Lee has with him are actually problems that Lee has with herself. For sure. And when Lee confronts him about it, he's like basically like one by one like, oh, like I didn't do that stuff in public because you explicitly stated that you didn't want to do it in public. Yeah. Maybe I wouldn't have been your boyfriend, but like we could have talked about it. Like we were doing these things on on your terms. And among among all of the men who do the fish and cheese thing – he does not, right? Devin says that he's the custodian of the list, but when she looked at it, her name wasn't marked off on right. it, and neither was the other girl that Cross was hooking up with, right? So, like, Cross maybe could have been more upfront that he was, like, seeing other women, um, but, like, those terms were established by Lee, and he does seem like a generally pretty cool guy. I got the sense that, like, he was, like, cycling through three or four girls and, like, going to a different girl's room every night. Maybe, Yeah. And I just, I, I don't, it's not, you don't know that because Lee doesn't know that. Right. But I don't, I didn't get a sense of like, I didn't like him or dislike him really because I just feel like I don't really know him. Like he's just the cool guy who she has a crush on that inexplicably he likes her. But I think that's again what I was saying before, that it'd be cool to know how Lee is actually perceived yeah. through the eyes of someone who isn't Lee. Yeah. Well, you sort of liked Martha, right? Kind of, but again, maybe just by comparison, because I think I like Martha more than Lee, but I don't really, I feel like we don't really know Martha. Martha just seems like she has her shit together more, which I Yeah, but it also seems like she's, she's abusive to Lee in a certain way, and that she seems like she's, like, in some ways, like, lording her friendship with Cross over, over Lee in a certain way, and, like, her perception is that, I, I get the sense that she is, like, getting off on being better than Lee. I think that comes through in her senior year. But I think sophomore and junior years, I think she was, like, a, a true friend to Lee. Yeah, because she had, cause they existed in the same social plane. Right. Like, by the time that it's, like, she's elected prefect, then it's like, oh, like, she's actually much better liked than Lee is. Right. Because she's willing to do stuff, willing to talk to people, willing to go out. Yeah. She goes to the dances, for example. But that's also what's frustrating is that, like, it's a narrative propelled by no yeah, exactly, yeah. And, like, she doesn't go to the dances. She, she never goes to a dance. She doesn't give you anything to root for because you're not, you're just, like, you didn't, anything that you have, you didn't earn. She didn't earn, like, Cross's affection. Cross just, like, is a dude that stumbled into her room drunk one night, right? Like, But it does feel like, and that, I think that's a little unclear, but it does feel like he, in, he knew, and maybe he was just horny, right? But, like, because Dee Dee says to Lee, did Cross come by your room? And she didn't know how to respond because, like, she didn't want people to – she didn't want to tell people because she didn't want to, like, lessen his social stature or whatever, right? Yeah. But when he comes there drunk, he's like, oh, yeah, no, Martha's out of town. So, like, Lee knows, in theory, that he came to see her, but he just might have been horny and just like, I think this girl has a crush on me. I'm just going to take advantage of her. Yeah, or he may have been going to see Martha and then when he entered the room realized that she wasn't there. Yeah. But it's not a crime being a horny teenager. Is that today's crime? <laughs> I forgot that, they, that we did that. Did I do that? Have I been doing that, or did I like forget about it? Yeah, last time you did the torrenting a movie to watch a, for a podcast, even though we watched it on YouTube last time. So <laughs> that's right. Yeah. You know, yeah. Even, even, I, I have not. Uh, I've not. I've not used Slack. What's the? What's the? Um, how would you want to see this in other media? And has it? Uh, this is something that reading the Wikipedia could have helped because there is no wiki. There's no wiki for it. So that's weird because it feels like a popular enough book yeah, that it would have a wiki. Two small paragraphs on Curtis Sittenfeld's wiki. Well, maybe we should we should start writing wikis for these things. Yeah, cool. And say like as as like uh, described on the How to Win the Lottery podcast, and then yeah. that's like a secret way to get people to listen. There, I don't remember what album it was, but uh, Jimmy Pardo on Never Not Funny would always talk about like how this was like some album was like his third favorite album of the eighties. Yeah, and so a listener put on that album's page like comedian Jimmy Pardo, and this is his third favorite album of the eighties, and like it's sitting on the wiki for like way too long, and eventually like like an editor was just like. Irrelevant. Why is this <laughs> Irrelevant. How do you uh, uh, see this taking form in in other media? I mean, I think you do like an you could do, you could do an eight episode Netflix miniseries or something where each chapter is a semester or a, 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 a an term. Each yeah, because like it's I think there's like maybe three chapters about freshman year and then two two and then one and like the senior year is just like a very long chapter. 
There's also a weird thing in the Kindle version of this book where, like, halfway through the final chapter, it's, like, end of chapter, basically. And, like, you go to the next page, and it's, like, before you go, like, the the, the Goodreads Kindle thing pops up, like, make sure to rate this book and, like, whatever. I'm just, like... Oh, this is the end? No. I'm, like, and I'm like there's through. 70 pages left. <laughs> and... Weird. It 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 end, ends, quote-unquote, ends when she's, like, looking through the flowers. And she finds one flower, and I'm, like, it's kind of a weird way to end it, but I... I guess that could be the ending. I like I go to the next page. I'm like, oh, there's just 70 more pages. Yeah. Um, but I think so. The, the senior year one. I don't know if that'd be one episode. But I think like the way that it breaks it down. I think is maybe frustrating in the ways that you talked about before. But I think that it it directly like again. I don't know why. The, I, I I can't imagine. I don't know why this wasn't adapted. Considering it's a cult classic and a popular at the time and easy to adapt. Well, I mean, one reason why it might not be adapted is because the the, the protagonist doesn't do shit. You, you, it's it's hard to adapt things yeah. when the protagonist is so passive True. because you you need a uh, active character to move the plot along. So much of this book would be her, like an adaptation of it would be her like sitting cross legged on her bed while other people are doing stuff and she's declining offers. Right. And that's not fun to watch, right? And then, and then you get to the the action of the book, which takes place exclusively at the end. Which is here's that's another reason why I like the assassination segment because she does stuff. Yeah, she's like hiding under the table, and she gets the guys. And she's interacting with her peers, and then like uh, when when uh, Conchita defeats her, it's like all that goes away. Like being like being beaten in Assassin, like t- removes all of her energy. So she doesn't right. act, she doesn't engage with anyone over the next two years. Well, and that's what like, toward the end of Assassin, she's like, oh, I don't want to win this because like, if I'm the winner, like that like, puts like weird pressure on me and like, people want me to win. I'm not going to win this game. And it's just like, ah, oh, fuck. You, yeah, you like, were doing being things. so lame. Because that's, that's why I think, like, especially, like, that was, you know, that's probably maybe, like, 150 pages in or whatever. But it's at the point where I'm just, like, I guess the moral of this is just, like, try to make friends. Yeah. Don't be like Lee. That's a good moral. But this book is way too long for that to be, like, the moral. <laughs> right. I, again, I think it's a 150-page book, and it's just the, the Conchita and uh, Cross and Assassin stuff. And sure. I don't think she ever consummates the relationship with Cross because for a book that is as realistic as this is... That wouldn't happen. It doesn't fucking happen like that. No. Right? The, the like, wallflower person, it, it, like, I, I don't know how it's, like, in small classes of, like, 50 people. Because Cross is, like, the, mo- the coolest kid on campus. Yeah. Like, yeah. what is he doing? And, 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 again, and you know, he is just, like, a horny 17-year-old. So, like, maybe he might just be looking for a, a, an orgasm. But, like, even, even that is just, like, but why her? It doesn't really make sense. Except for that it's narratively set up in the beginning. Right. So if you have just a 150-page book that is about the assassin and the stuff with Conchita and the stuff with Cross, you end it, and you end it in the right place because it's like her opportunity to interact with Cross. Like, she she created this superficial circumstance where, uh, like, had she been successful, she would have interacted with Cross. But in reality, it's an excuse to not interact with Cross, which is how people like that operate, right? They're always making up excuses to not do things. And she even, there's like, there's an extended, not like super extended, but like a thing where she talks out in this book why she likes not talking to people because the pressure on the second interaction. She's like this whole like yeah. weird yeah, twisted yeah. thing, Matt, that like, cool, we had a great moment in class. Like, it wasn't that crazy. Uh, but then if I see you after class, then we have, like, pressure. And, like, I don't want that. Like, and, what, like, are we just going to talk about the thing that we just did? And it's like, I don't know. Like, you just talk about whatever. Right. You have so many shared experiences. Like, if you're at a boarding school, I mean, I, I get that kids are dicks and a lot of kids suck. But it feels almost impossible to not make friends just because everybody is sharing the exact same experience. Even in college, when I in, in my dorm, like, I was friends with all sorts of kids that I had nothing in common with because we lived down the hall from each other i would just be like let's go to to the stall and then we would just go eat yeah and i would not these are people that i would never hang out with again but it's like the prox the circumstance of proximity led me to those friendships just out of convenience i have a very i completely forgot this, this happened until you told that story but i remember a friend of mine freshman year who i would wind up living with my sophomore year we were friends with another girl who was dating a guy who was a sophomore. It's like a year older than us, right? And like my one friend, Tom, I'll call him Tom because his name's Tom, said to our friend's boyfriend, like, why are you hang with us? Like, you're sophomore, we're freshmen. He's like, 
dude, it's college. Nobody gives a shit. Yeah. And like, that's all it took. And he's like, oh, okay. Yeah. It feels like at any point in this book, somebody's like, Lee, there's like 50 of us. Just be normal. And she's like, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, we can literally all just hang out. It doesn't, right. it doesn't matter at all. Because it seems like, again, it's unclear because we're all in our head. It seems like her friends are like, not, not, her, not her friends because they're not her friends. But the people are like, hey, you can hang out. Like she has at the mall with Cross and his friends, they don't mind that she's there. Yeah. And every other time that like she's around people, they don't mind that she's there. Yeah. They're only weird when she's like, when she gets weird, they're like, why are you making a big deal about this? It's just, it's the same thing. It's the same interaction over and over again where people are like, hey, you belong. It doesn't matter. Which is like, again, if I, people feel that way in real life. Yeah. So if, if you're a person that felt that way growing up and you read this book, it's probably very validating. It's probably like, fuck, I am like, I feel seen because this person has the same insecurities and they're running through the same thought, like toxic thought cycles that I ran through when I was going through this. But does that, do you want to relive that? I, I get. I mean, I yeah. get relating to it. But I, like, I, I think. I think a lot of people do want to relive things that are, mm. or that they feel because, like, it, it's validating. It makes you feel less like a freak. But I, I think, like, I have suffered from the same kind of thing where like, I need to say yes to more things. Yeah. But this isn't. I don't. I'm not. I'm not like. Oh, I relate to Lee. I'm like. I know better now to right, say yes. Just say yes. Yeah. Just say yes. Eat shit, Nancy Reagan. Yeah. I mean, that is. Uh, has always been the tagline to this podcast. Eat shit, Nancy Reagan. <laughs> and keep reading, Nancy Reagan. Uh, uh, today's crime is forcing Nancy Reagan to eat your shit. We have an email address, lottery at cageclub.me. And our friend Egg wrote in her reaction. She emailed this in before I started reading the book. <laughs> <laughs> She's fast. She's probably almost done with uh, Art of Fielding by now. I also didn't. Like, I, I, we, 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 we map out the schedule and the recording schedule to a point where, like, we can both kind of read this, like, comfortably, but not, like, you can't really, like, drag your heels. Like, if you, like, fall behind, like, it becomes a lot. And, like, yeah. we had two weeks to read this, and I just didn't read it for eight days because I just had other shit going on. What's our, You have to read 30 pages a day, basically. That's right? what to we keep, mapped it out, yeah. yeah. When I was, like, Meg's reaction to prep, I was like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised that I ended up liking this book at all. It was very readable and compelling. Readable, yes. Compelling, I would not say yes. But I'm not sure if I actually liked any of the characters. Maybe Cross, but everyone else kind of sucked. I like Conchita. Yeah. Although I guess she's a traitor at the end, so maybe not. Maybe I don't like Conchita at the end who's like, this school is great. Because like, it, it, it is pretty clear to me that Alt does fucking suck. Unless you're wealthy. Yeah. Well, she is wealthy. Right. Good point. I had a little bit of trouble getting into this at first because I couldn't tell if the readers were supposed to quote unquote like Lee. It wasn't until the scene where Conchita calls out Lee for being terrible that I felt comfortable in my dislike for Lee. Like, sure, it, quote, doesn't matter if the author intended us to dislike her or not, but the fact that she made it easier to stomach the novel as a whole. No, I'm, I'm with her. The frustrating part of this novel is that Curtis Sittenfeld captures a teenage girl's voice a little too well. This is the perspective that I don't think we have. There you go. Lee never seems to mature past her freshman year, even when she's talking from a place of the future, and a bunch of these quote-unquote truths she announces throughout the course of the novel felt like the quote-unquote truths I'd write in my high school diary, thinking that I was being deep, but really I was just <laughs> spouting nonsense. Take that, Lee. By far, the most frustrating thing about this book is that Lee spends the entire time upholding the status quo, but then complains to the reporter in the article. That's a, Yeah, we didn't really talk about that. That's a really good point. I think it's also believable, though. Like, it's just like, I can't, I'm just one person. And then also in that moment, Lee is so dumb. Oh, not knowing that she's getting taken for a ride and, and falling for all this stuff. And just like, wait, why are you writing it down? It's like, because I'm interviewing you. She's got to think it started yeah. yet. Yeah. And then she like still just keeps running her mouth. Uh -huh. I'd have done the same, though. It's intoxicating <laughs> to have someone like listen to you. Yeah, man. Oh, I thought you were going to keep going. No, don't look at me I was me trying like to listen that. to you. It kind of reminded me about what Bobby said about, quote, un unremarkable whiteness with You Shall Know Our Velocity. So many people tell Lee that she could have friends and that people like her if she would just put herself out there. But then every time she goes, oh, they don't understand how things worked. This gets revealed pretty early on when she says, I felt an affinity for him that I felt for all undeserving outcasts not for the flat-out definitively awkward or ugly kids of whom at all were few, but for the people who it seemed to me could either have been either popular or unpopular and who ended up by choice, could choice have played a role on the periphery. 
It also is pretty clear that she could have dated Cross if she tried, but then she relies on Martha to quote-unquote allow her in a weird sense. Because Martha, the voice of the status quo, tells Lee that she can't picture Cross and Lee together. Lee takes that as a truth instead of just her friend's opinion. Calling Martha the voice of the status quo is, a really, is, is uh, I think, a really smart note and also gives um, ballast to the reasons why I don't like Martha. I think you don't like Martha because Lee is dumb. Okay. I think Martha's fine. <laughs> All right. I'm a Martha stan. That's, this, is the <laughs> this, is where, this is the line I'm drawing the sentence. No, I, I, I think that, like, if Lee had more confidence, Martha would be a good character. I will also say this is this probably has nothing to do with the book. Uh, I might not might not have anything to do with the book. But, you know, in, um, like, for example, uh, uh, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, the Edward Albee play, um, the characters uh, are George and Martha, are the, are the leads. And so Martha is traditionally, I think, used um because of george and martha washington sure right so i think i think martha is sometimes traditionally used as like a symbolic america for for uh feminine characters interesting yeah it's also a very white name for sure yeah i also wanted to mention that i don't like martha either fuck yeah (laughs) i think part of this has to do with that she also upholds the status quo but she also feels like but she also feels like a quote mean girl Never explicitly stated, or that is never explicitly stated. Did either of you guys get that impression? Is she a mean girl? Uh, she might morph into one. I don't think she is one. From the, I think yeah, I Aspeth is Dee Dee. Dee Dee is because she wants to impress Aspeth. Horton. Horton is because she's roommates with Aspeth. Also, I, these names are terrible. Uh, well, they're they're like waspy uh, New England names. Um, do I think that she's, she's a, a mean girl? girl. I, I don't think I would call her a mean girl, but like I think that there is something. If I knew her personally there would be something about her that I would recognize as evil and would try to stay away. Oh, okay. I would not be friends with Martha. I think because... Who would you be friends with in this book? Probably Lee. <laughs> <laughs> not the answer I was expecting. <laughs> no, I, 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 you know, um, probably, honestly, like, if, 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 you mean if I was in high school? If you, if you were at all with them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, not now. You were not friends with like sixteen year old people now. Pretty weird. Pretty weird. Honestly, um, yeah, probably Lee and and Conchita, maybe and like, Sinjun. Yeah, probably. Um, maybe maybe Darden. Uh, maybe Cross. Uh, but like, yeah, probably not the the like quote unquote hot mean girls. Um, okay, and not uh, probably not Martha. I guess speaking directly to Meg now, Martha reminds me of a lot of people that we mutually know and dislike that maybe we worked with at certain points. Oh, <laughs> fascinating. I like that the sex scenes between Lee and Cross were not sexy. Oh, that's, we talked that's, about that. Yeah, you're there. But I think that part of that is just Lee going along with what she felt was important again to the status quo. She felt the most passionate about Cross touching her hair, but she didn't mention that to Cross and went along with having sex with Cross. She's also pretty passionate about getting finger banged. Yeah. Even though there's there's a funny thing where like she's jerking him off or she starts, she has an whatever, and then he starts fingering her and she's just like, too many things going on. <laughs> she, she stops. <laughs> yeah. I Yeah. Also, um... Okay, sorry that I said finger bang. For some reason, that's a word that I feel shy about. It feel it feels like uh, beyond the pale. Like that's f- finger bang is somehow dirtier to say than blowjob or fucking. I don't well, know. Why. Well, this is a very like austere novel in that just like he was inside me. It's just like okay, like it's like eighteen hundred sort of in that yeah, way. Yeah, right. Yeah, she's she's not like his throbbing cock or something like that. But she wouldn't be right because no. she's because she's shy. She's shy about that stuff. Even though she's, like, reading Cosmo or whatever. Yeah, that's true. She went along with having sex with Cross in secret because it would be unheard of for them to actually be together because it was, quote, the next logical step. Mm-hmm. The next thing I want to talk about is Lee's dad. For whatever reason, him slapping her wasn't what made me dislike him. I don't want to say that Lee deserved to get slapped. <laughs> yeah, come on. But I kind of understand <laughs> why he did. It was actually the scene in the car where he says, tell you what, Flea, when we get home, I'll park. Joseph and I will go inside. You can sit in front for as long as you like. For whatever reason, that's the ice hockey that's thing. That's on the ice hockey thing, yeah. For whatever reason, that scene filled me with so much rage, probably because it reminds me of my own parents needling me as a teenager. Parents are mean to kids. and But, but especially when they can team up with siblings, right? Yeah. I also think that there's, like, I, I kind of related to, like, because it, it's clear that she does not share a lot with her parents. And I think also yeah, her choosing sure. to go to alts. For whatever maybe tenuous relationship you have with them, 
really hurts it's alienating. both of them. Yeah, right. Because for sure. Because she realizes like in, in futurely telling the story, she's like, I didn't realize at the time that you have your whole life to leave home and I chose to do it at like at thirteen. Or and also whatever. it also alienates her from her siblings. Like in in a circumstance like that where you are a sibling and you're going to public school and your sister is going to a fancy East Coast private school, like your sibling, your younger brothers are definitely going to think that you think that you're better than they are. And he there's a, a good line where Joseph is like I'm surprised you I, – I, I'm not surprised you don't know how far away his house is because you don't even live here anymore. Yeah. And, the, like, the younger brother's, like, very young and just, like, basically not in the novel. Yeah. So it's clear from her relationship that she does not share a lot with him. Mm-hmm. But then he gets – when he gets picked up, he's just, like, telling the dad about everything from the party. And she's like, oh, he's telling him way more than I would have. And I'm like, yeah, I relate to that. Like, it's just different – like, even, you know, siblings having different relationships with the parents. It's just – not good or bad. It's just – different level of openness, I guess. Yeah, and also probably uh, with regards to parties and stuff like that, it's probably easier for boys to talk to their dads than it is for girls to talk to their dads because dads are... Um... But I guess she doesn't talk to her mom either. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I don't, the mom isn't, isn't in the book that much. No. Comparatively. But I think the like the dad and, the, and Lee both have anger issues, sort of. I mean, Lee learned anger from the dad probably because yeah. that's how it works, right? I also feel like there's kind of a, a a thread that gets dropped where, like, someone at school does, like, the jerk-off motion, and they're like, oh, Lee, do you know what that is? And she's like, do I know what that is? My dad would, like, call us down for dinner by saying, boy, stop whacking off. And she's like, okay, are we going to go more than that? Or are we just, that's just like a... <laughs> How much further do you want her to go with I that? don't know. <laughs> like, what's the next step that you have in your head about that? I don't know. Like, Cross is like, have you ever done this before? And she's like, have I ever done this before? My dad just... <laughs> that, that. Exactly. That's the next step? Yeah. I just want to mention that I laughed super hard at the very last scene where Lee gets turned around to the Park Street Station. There are not nearly enough signs at that station. Oh, this is just some Boston local shit. <laughs> there are not nearly enough signs at that station. And the first time I tried to transfer the orange line from there, come on, Mike, what are we doing, what are we doing here? <laughs> this is so alienating. I tried to transfer the orange line from there. The orange line stopped at downtown crossing, but there's an underground concourse that connects them. <laughs> I walked down the stairs, up a different set of stairs, back downstairs and back up, all before my friend saw me and directed me where to go. She feels like a girl who likes trains. Who? Uh, Meg. Meg? Yeah, well, we can, yeah, sure. It's pretty funny. I don't, she didn't, I don't think, I don't, I'm sure she like didn't mean it to not be funny, but like, I don't think she meant it to be as funny as we thought it was. What the, well, like the thing that, that's interesting about that is like. Local references. No, but I think, I think it like does show you a level of, of care and realism that Sittenfeld puts into the book, right? That she like locates a specific train stop and talks about that specific thing being confusing. And that specific thing is confusing for real. It is funny to be to to because I I don't know anything about any of that stuff. Like obviously, like when I was reading that book, I was not like this is so relatable. <laughs> well, it's it's different, but similar to like Andrew Yang or whatever being like my favorite subway stop, Times Square. <laughs> <laughs> there is a good like I, I I highlighted a bunch of things. I think you know in the Kindle version, I don't know the many passages that I really like, but there are lines and ideas that I really liked. That's all. That was the end of Meg's email. Thank you, Meg, for writing. I don't want to cut you off. Four percent into the book. So what is that like? 20 pages in maybe I was wearing You're a long... math dork I don't know fuck you yeah I'm tutoring you I'm Aubrey here and you're Lee yeah you're you, that's that's accurate I would be friends with Aubrey who, yeah you you would be friends with Aubrey who you writes, fucking nerd who, who writes a note to her like <laughs> I've always loved you and she's like what do you want me to do with this what well, yeah that, that that's like a really fascinating thing too because it shows like the power structures of of uh romantic love in in high school where it's like Everyone is just in love with someone that does not give a fuck about them at all. The flower giving game, not game, but like the Valentine's Day thing. Yeah. I was like, this is so fucked up. No, so, I love that stuff. But so cool. Like, well, yeah. Well, so like the, 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 the flower thing Sorry. is you can send one of three flowers. Yeah. Pink means friends. White is secret admirer. And red means you love them. Yeah. But it's run by girls who go to the school. Yeah. And so they know everybody who's sending them and getting them. And so they know all the gossip. Yeah. I had I've never told anybody this. I'm telling you oh, and oh, our many exclusive. listeners. Gotta get ourselves exclusive. I had this idea when I was like in elementary school because like everybody's just like because the whole like not the point of elementary school was just like who likes who and like nobody does anything because you're in elementary school. But I was like, imagine if we like you went to the cafeteria and like everybody's name was around the cafeteria and it's just like go stand next to the sign of the person you like. 
and I thought that was a great idea. And then I never thought about like, oh, so many people would have nobody next to them and they'd be utterly uh, devastated. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're imagining it's like a one to one thing. Like everybody likes a person that like when in reality everyone would group around like three or four names. Yeah. But I didn't think about that when I was like eight. I'm just like, ooh, I wonder. Like, it's like the way of finding like who likes you. But like, that's basically in a way that's this. Yeah, I love that stuff because it's like it's so stupid. Yeah. But it's also like such like a way for because it's institutional, right? There has to be like adults running that sort of or like setting it up or or like approving of it, and like it's so like specifically structured to cause tension and drama among young people yeah like the harm that that stuff does so outweighs the good but it like exists specifically to make people like feel weird and and like tense yeah. and nervous and it's like they, there should just be more shit like that all the time and i like that the teachers are like she's like they almost all hate this but like the one teacher is like sending her flowers and stuff. yeah, yeah like, the one teacher didn't do it so weird but maybe this is because this happens in Clueless. They have like a kind of like the Valentine's like the you buy a buy a thing. So maybe that's what the clues on the cover is from. It's just like, yeah, this is just like Clueless. Well, you know, the OC is mostly about class uh, conflict. Welcome to the OC, so, bitch. Yeah. The O-Niners. So, that's the Veronica Mars, the O-Niners. Veronica Mars, the O-Niners. Uh, but the OC, you have Ryan Atwood, who who comes to this, uh, uh, the Cohen family. And he's like, he's from Chino, notoriously low class where there's where the prisons are lmc lower middle class and he and so he moves in with this upper class family and it's like every it's it's basically him trying to fit in and like the dialectics of of that so maybe that's sort of what they're getting at when they say it's like the oc but like it's not if it were more like the oc it would be like you know more quippy fun yeah good yeah there would be more like uh i don't know rachel bilson or bra or something but yeah, 20 pages into this book, I was wearing a long dress with peach and lavender flowers and a lace collar, and I noticed immediately that most of the students had on faded t-shirts and loose khaki shorts and flip-flops. I realized then how much work alt would be for me. And like, that's a good line. Like, just observing and just like, fuck, like this, I thought this was what I wanted, but like, yeah, it, I guess it's because of that she just like shrivels into inward. Well, also like the funny thing is like, uh, it, it sounds like she was doing way too much work. So like the idea of um dressing down like frilly lace collars with corduroy like that seems like way more work than a faded t-shirt and flip-flops right but like she's going to the to the faded t-shirt and flip-flops is actually more work for her because it would require thinking less somehow there's a teacher miss moray who's like the nerd who's like 23 or whatever like a very young i yeah i wasn't comfortable with them picking on her either i can't believe nobody calls her moray eel yeah or anyone says that's a moray right I was yeah, I was really uncomfortable with them making fun of the way that she dressed and stuff like that. I'm sure students make fun of the way that I dress. I mean, I know for a fact that they do because they made fun of me to my face about the way that I dress. But not behind your back. Well, also maybe behind your back. I'll, I, if someone's making fun of you to <laughs> your face, it's very likely that when I'm not in the classroom, they're just like, "I loved boys." I thought all of them. <laughs> well, I mean, again, like I think that stuff is is also true in so far as like. Number one, there are proximity crushes that you have on people. But number two, like when you're young, anytime anyone pays you any attention, you're just like, I'm super into that. Which is very reflected here. Yeah. I think next time we have Art of Fielding by Chad Harback. Yep. Who's the editor of the M plus one journal. What's that? That's a literary fiction journal. Okay. Pretty good. Pretty good stuff. Uh, It's his only book. It came out a while ago. It was a big hit. He hasn't written anything since. It's a book partially about baseball. I'm sure Joey will read the Wikipedia and have all the facts ready hey man, to go. Hey, not my job. Time. This week's crime is forcing Nancy Reagan to eat your own shit. Should we talk about... Oh, you're going to go back on it now? The townie boy who works in the kitchen, or is that not worth it? Oh, no, to? that is. I mean, that's a huge class issue, right? That's, you know, she's... She gets shamed into not dating this kid. She's shamed into not dating him because he is a townie. She might be able to get away with dating him if she were a rich girl, because then it would there would be novelty to it. But because she's a scholarship kid... There, there's something like uh, almost like she's finding her own and and that's embarrassing to her. So she has to abandon it. Also, that guy's a creep, man. He's, there's, a, there's a lot of college people dating high school. Yeah, he's book. he's an adult, an adult with a job and he's trying to date. Well, a, he's like 20. Yeah, but he's trying to date like a 15 year old. She's a, that's sophomore year, right? Sophomore, junior. She's I think she's 16, 17. Still, it's not good. Yeah, it's it's like, come on, man. 
So, yeah, don't date. Make that guy look bad. Who gives a shit? I don't feel bad for that guy when he gets embarrassed. He should be embarrassed for approaching a table of high schoolers and trying to go, oh, oh I, can't get, I can't use the car this week. Get out of here, man. Beat it, loser. What about Nancy Reagan? Uh, today's crime is forcing Nancy Reagan to eat your shit. Keep reading, Nancy Reagan. Uh,